So let's pray for Lydia, shall we, as she begins you. her ministry, and particularly teaching and speaking here this morning. Father, thank you for Lydia, for all that she's been through in preparation and training and equipping. And we pray now as she begins this new step, this new journey with us here at St. Andrews, and also being part of St. Mary's and St. George's and helping out at St. Mark's and Bourne End, that you would bless her, equip her, and enable her to use the spiritual gifts that you've given her to serve this church. Amen. 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 Thank well, you. you. Thank you very much. Well, it's lovely to be here this morning with you and um, really getting going. Um, so, and this morning we are finishing our series on spiritual gifts. So if you've been here over the past few weeks, we've been looking at the gifts of healing, wisdom, knowledge, prophecy, and faith. And I thought how we'd begin this morning is just to take a few moments to have a think about some of the gifts we've been learning about, uh, maybe what God has been stirring in you over the last few weeks. Maybe you have stepped out and discovered new gifts in the last few weeks, maybe gifts of prophecy or healing. And maybe you've seen the God, a God raising the gift of faith in you. But if you're more like me, you've not been around for all of the series or even any of it, maybe it's your first time here this morning, that doesn't matter. Have a think in this moment about some of the gifts that you either know you already have or perhaps a gift that you want to grow in. We had Debbie and Casey sharing some of these earlier as well and maybe that has piqued something in you. So some of you when you came in would have received a gift tag and a pen. If you haven't, now is the time to wave uh, and we will come round to you with a gift tag and a pen. And as you receive your gift tag and your pen, we're thinking about gifts, tenuous link I know, but have a think and write down some of the gifts either you know you already have, the gifts you want to grow in, or the gifts that you've maybe found stirring up in yourself over the last few weeks. Keep waving if you don't have a gift tag. If you're not sure, there's one right at the back on the sound desk over there. If you're not sure what your gifts are, it's always good to ask the person next to you. They often know better than you do what your gifts may be. Couple still waiting. What the back there? Oh, here we go. Excellent. And keep hold of that. You'll be needing it a little bit later on, but for now you can put it down if you would like, once you're ready, or you can carry on scribbling as I'm speaking. So as we wrap up this series on our gifts, having reflected on what our gifts are and what we've been growing in, our theme this morning is where do I use these gifts? When do I use these gifts? And how do I use these gifts? Oh, there should be, oops, there we go. When, where, and how? So if you've started discovering some new gifts over the past few weeks, you may be now wondering, well, what am I supposed to do with them? Am I supposed to go to Aldi and start having prophetic words for people who are doing their shopping? If I've got the gift of healing, am I supposed to go to A&E and start praying for people who are in the waiting room that they may be healed? Essentially, how do I go about my life using these gifts without looking totally and utterly weird? And our passage this morning is from Paul's letter to the Corinthians. Paul writes two letters to the Corinthians, and they're both pretty long letters. 
which gives an indication of some of the things that needed addressing in the church. They were a newly planted congregation and they were a mixture of Jews and Gentiles, so coming from very different cultural backgrounds. And putting it mildly, there were some teething problems for them. They were the early church, the first church, and essentially they didn't really know what they were doing. They didn't know how to operate as a church. They didn't have deanery synods or canon law to help guide them on what they should and shouldn't be doing. When I was growing up, there was a TV series called My Parents Are Aliens. And I'm sussing out who's my age by who in the room's gone, oh yeah, I remember that one. Well, essentially, it was a sitcom for, um, for children or teenagers. And in this sitcom, some two aliens crash-landed on Earth, and they needed to find a way to blend in to avoid the authorities catching them and wanting to perform loads of tests on them. And so they went to the children's home and fostered three children so that they could look like a nice, normal family. And the premise of this series is that the alien parents had no clue how to behave in society. And it ran for so many series, and the children basically had to educate these parents on what they could and couldn't do in life. And some of these things were really basic. Like, no, you can't go into a supermarket and take a baby out of someone else's trolley and take it home with you. That's not allowed. And no, when we arrive at school at parents' evening, please don't go up to the teacher and kiss them on the lips. It's not what we do. And sometimes when I read Corinthians, I get a similar kind of vibe about this church. When you read what Paul is telling them on what we might consider really basic things. He's like, right, everybody, this is how to take communion. Number one, don't turn up drunk. Very simple. And he's like, guys, this is how to behave in a worship service. Number one, turn up and listen to each other. It's a very practical how-to guide on being church because really they didn't have a clue what they were doing. And we benefit from this letter years later because often if we're really honest, we don't know what we're doing either. And we need reminding and encouraging on how we should be using our giftings. It seems from this letter that the Corinthian church is not using their gifts in a good way. It seems that they rock up to church and it's chaos. Now, church is sometimes a bit chaotic, when we invite the Holy Spirit, sometimes things get a little bit messy. I love worshipping with children, but sometimes things can get a bit chaotic. Flags can get waved too exuberantly and go up someone else's nose. It happens. But this isn't the kind of chaos that Paul is warning against. The chaos that Paul is referring to is when people arrive and they try and out spiritualize one another, showing off that they are the most spiritual in the room. So you imagine the Corinthian church, it's Sunday morning or whenever they gather to worship, and Betty comes in and Betty starts giving a prophetic word. But in the middle of that, Irene is looking at Betty and thinking, well, I've got a prophetic word as well. So Irene starts giving her prophetic word before Betty has quite finished hers. And then up comes Janet, who starts, you know, singing, shine, Jesus, shine, fill this. And before you know it, you've got chaos. No one can hear a word of what's going on. Betty's prophetic word's been lost. So is Irene's prophetic word. And half the congregation are like, should we join in with Janet singing, shine, Jesus, shine? I don't know what to do. And before you know it, Doris starts speaking in a tongue and no one can interpret it because they can't even hear it. The room is filled suddenly with people trying to out-spiritualize one another who are focused so much on themselves and God that they've forgotten that they're in a space where they're supposed to be worshiping together, corporately. And so Paul, in his letter, calls them out on this. 
He calls them to order, not because a church must be a place of regimented order, but because for that church, through order came the opportunity for all of the spiritual gifts to be used and benefited. Paul says this, everything must be done so that the church may be built up. This is the standard. This is the reason that we are given the giftings. Everything must be done so that the church may be built up. It's not building up the church if Betty and Irene and and Janet and Doris are, are trying to show off who's most spiritual by giving the prophetic words and singing songs and speaking out tongues at the same time because no one can hear them. It doesn't benefit anyone. However genuine those prophecies or tongues may be, they can't be heard. So no one benefits. The only benefit, the only people who benefit are those who've given them and they're feeling quite spiritual at that moment. But everything must be done so that the church may be built up. I wonder, over the last few weeks in your faith journey, what gifts you have discovered. Certainly in the week that I was here when we looked at healing, a lot of people got up and had a go for the first time. And people were healed. In our giftings, they're for the building up of the church. That means that our spiritual giftings are not our own. They don't exist just to make us feel good. They are gifted to us in order that we might build up the church. This means really we are the custodians of our gifts. If they're given to us for the building up of the church and we're not going to use them, we might find that those giftings grow a bit stale and We forget how to use them. Spiritual gifts exist for everyone, not just for ourselves, because they are for the building up of the church. And we don't all have the same set of giftings, because if we did, we could exist on our own. And we're not made for that. We're made to be a body. I wonder if you've ever tried a picture with just one or two colours. It's a classic restaurant situation where you go and they give you a colouring sheet and a tiny little packet and you're like, well, I've only got red, blue, green and, and yellow here and actually I want to I colour in this dragon purple or I want to I wanna do something a bit different here. And, and there's not much joy in doing the colouring or in the finished product. If you've not been equipped to colour what should be a multicoloured picture. Well, if you think of our church as being a picture, and each of us has maybe one or two colours in our hands, then we need to share our colours in order to colour in the whole picture. If someone's got red, and they're not showing up to colour in the buses or the fire engines, then the picture is going to be lacking in some way. It's the same with our gifts. If we have the gift of prophecy, but we don't use it, then the church misses out on being encouraged. If you've got the gift of being able to pray for healing and you don't use it, then people miss out. The church misses out. Everyone has a part to play. Everyone has a gift to share. And lots, I know, are already using them. We can testify to that through everything that happens here already. And the fact that we want to build, uh, build this building, raise it up, change it round, means that we've got something, things we are doing and people are using their giftings, which is great. But yet there's always gaps that need colouring in. 
There's always places where someone else is needed. I wonder what you have in your hands, what gift you have to offer the church. If your tag that you wrote on earlier has something which you're not currently exercising, whether in church or outside of it, then you have an opportunity. Everything must be done so that the church may be built up. But what about outside the church? Do we not need to use them then? Or are these our Sunday gifts that we pick up along with our Bible and put on our Sunday best and bring them along to church and then leave them behind at the end? Yet we're called to be a witness to the world. Jesus tells us in Matthew's gospel that we are the salt of the earth. We are the light of the world, called to make a difference in our communities. That may look different in our homes, in our places of work, and in our friendship groups. And there are ways which you might use these giftings in a bold way. When I was studying at London School of Theology, um, they, there was a group of people who said, oh, we're going to go out treasure hunting. Who wants to join us? And I thought that sounded a bit Famous Five-y, so I was like, cool, I'm in. Um, but actually, it was nothing to do with the Famous Five, as I discovered. What we did is we prayed together before we went out. We pray, we'd ask for words of knowledge, uh, and then we'd go out and see if we could find that person. So when we were gathering, someone might say, I've got a picture of someone wearing a blue jacket, and I think they've got problems with their dad. So we're going to go and find them and pray for them. And, um, and we did that, and, and sometimes we came back with mixed results. Some people had amazing encounters with people where they'd seen, they found the exact person that they had pictured and had a conversation with them and spoken into their life. And other times we'd go out and nothing really would happen. But there was this one time that I particularly remember where I went out in Harrow with another student, a friend of mine. And as we were walking past this bench in Harrow High Street, um, my friend just grabbed my arm and said, oh my goodness, I've got this really strong impression of the word Steve. And I think this man has something to do with someone called Steve. And so we said, right, we'll circle back. So we circled back and started walking up to him. And then she grabbed my arm and turned away. And again, she's like, no, I can't do it, I can't do it. So we walked, we walked away again. We walked up and down Harrow High Street quite a few times. And then eventually we approached this man and my friend said, um, this is going to sound really weird, um, but um, I've got, uh, got this sense uh, of, of the name Steve, and I'm just wondering if that means anything to you. Because uh, we're Christians, we believe God wants us to talk to you about Steve. Um, and this man looked at us in a slightly bemused fashion, and he spoke really slowly to us. And he's like, well, yes, that, that does mean something to me because that is my name. And we were like, oh, great, phew, that's wonderful. So we had this conversation with him. It turned out he was a lapsed churchgoer. I think he was a Catholic. And, um, and he'd been thinking about going back. And so we were like, yeah, God's just spoken to us. And he obviously wants to talk to you that he sent two random people up to you in the street. So God loves you. God wants to meet with you. And then we went on our way. And I never knew, we never found out what happened to Steve, but we just left it with God. Um, and there are times where we might exercise our giftings in such a way. Things like healing on the streets or street angels or street evangelism. Or you may be the kind of person that goes up to someone when you're out shopping, when God just hits you with a word for them and you speak into their life. I know there are some people who have those stories, which are always really exciting. But for many of us, those kind of stories make us shrivel up in embarrassment. And we're like, oh, I can possibly do that. That's just mortifying. Um, and some of you even now, as I've told that story, are starting to sweat a little bit and just feel a little bit clammy and a bit, oh, no, I can't, can't possibly. But don't panic. It's fine. Because I think what we're largely called to do is to share our gifts in more subtle ways. Just to let our light shine in everything we do, in conversations with others, in gentle encouragement, 
Alice came up and shared a few weeks ago a story about how she was sharing her faith with her family, and they kind of ask her offhandedly, oh yeah, can you pray for us? And she's like, yes, actually I will. Being that person who, you know, be the weird person in your family that people ask to pray for things. Can you put in a word for us with a man upstairs? Great, I'd love to. And we'll also talk about your theology about that, but that's great, we'll do that another time. Recently, I found myself noticing in conversations with people Um, really sort of deep spiritual searching comments that they kind of make offhand. And I've been trying to jump on them. People say things like, oh, I've got a really good feeling about this. And I'm like, yeah, so do I. And I think think it's God. I think God's really given this gift uh, of, of, you know, this situation. Or someone says, oh, this feels like fate. It feels like it's meant to be. And I'm like, yeah, I think God has a plan for this. God is at work. And we can offer to pray for people. We don't have to do it there and then, but we can say, do you know what? I'm going to pray for you. We can share stories of what we've seen God do. Saying, oh, do you know what? I prayed for someone the other day and their their shoulder was giving them problems and, and they were healed. When we tell those stories to people, when we share them, these kind of things make people ask questions their faith begins to rise and they begin to think, oh, that's interesting. And they start inviting us into those spaces. It may not be the charismatic laying hands of someone on, in Tesco's and then falling to the floor and declaring Jesus is Lord. Maybe that will happen, I don't know. But sometimes it's the gradual drip, drip, drip of continuing to use our giftings giftings given to us so that we might build one another up, both in the church and outside of it, so that others may come to know God. I'm going to invite you to stand now, if you're able, and you might want to pick up your gift tag and hold it in your hands. And as we stand, the band are going to come up uh, onto the stage and be ready to lead us in a response in a moment. But I'm just going to pray for us as we hold these gifts in our hand. And as we have this moment, we can start asking God in your hearts, God, what is it that you have given me that you want me to offer you? What is in my hands? And Father, we thank you that you are a good God who longs to give gifts to his children. And that is who we are. And we thank you for these gifts. Thank you for the things that even now are just growing in us. Things that excite us, things that maybe scare us a little bit, but we're excited to see what God might do with them. In a moment, uh, I'm going to place a couple of bowls at the front of church. And in a moment, uh, the band are going to lead us in a song of response. And if you want to be using your gift, if you want to be offering it up to God, then I want to invite you during that song to come and place your tag in the bowls, thank you Debbie, um, at the front. Just as a, as a sign that, God, I'm willing, I'm giving you back what you've given me and I'm willing to use it for the building up of your church. So as we start to sing, that is going to be uh, what you can do in your own time when you're ready. But I also just want to um, offer out a word just as Uh, we were sitting in the service, I had this sense that there might be some people who, as I've been speaking about gifts and offering them up to God, you've just gone, I'm tired, I'm weary, I don't want to be giving this, oh, she's asking me to do more stuff, you know, this new peppy curate who's got loads of energy, why, you know, why on earth do I have to keep doing this, I'm just so tired. 
We'd love to pray with you. If that's you, the prayer ministry team are going to be available. Um, so if you're on prayer ministry, please come and grab your badge and be ready to come and pray for people. But if that's you and you're feeling really weary of the gifts that you've been giving, maybe you're feeling just totally on empty, that you're running dry, then come and be prayed for. We would love to pray with you this morning. So, Ban, thank you. Let's, let's sing. Let's respond to God.